John Doerr spells out the recipe for efficiency in corporations by using objectives and key results. A seasoned pro, Doerr traces on his history with OKRs and uses several examples from case studies by people who have implemented his system of utilizing OKRs. What unrolls is this. A great story and mission aren't the only keys to success. Having a structured, transparent way of creating goals aligns a company and drives them to better performance. Dora uses several case studies from tech companies and even a musician to present how OKRs changed their missions from being visions into reality. This audiobook encapsulates key takeaways found in the original book. We've also provided an in-depth analysis, as well as removing any fluff to save you hours of your time. If you've read the original, then this audio summary will help you solidify the most important lessons. Part 1. OKRs in Action 1. Google Meet OKRs How OKRs Came to Google and the Superpowers They Convey Using Google as an example, the author, John Doerr, discusses the what, why, and how of objectives and key results, OKRs, in the realm of business. Doerr uses the very process of OKRs to give an education on what OKRs are and how they operate in the business world. Doerr delves into the story of Google's creation, along with its creators, Larry and Sergey. At the beginning of their story, they were visionaries without the tools necessary to make their vision a reality. Enter John Doerr with a solution that he had learned in his career with Intel from Andy Slate. Doerr delivers the recipe for OKRs using Silicon Tech style. It is simplistic, to the point, and cites examples from successful Silicon Valley enterprises that also used OKRs. Objectives are what is to be achieved. Key results are the measured results of those objectives. Without these components, an organization or business can be lost, ineffective, and fail at their overall vision. The concept of OKRs may be simple and obvious, but what Doerr drives into the reader is the importance of repeatedly analyzing OKRs. At Google, it is done annually on a larger level and continuously on smaller levels throughout the fiscal year. He breaks down the chapters of the book at the end of the chapter to convey the best way possible to approach the OKR methodology and its application. 2. The Father of OKRs Andy Grove creates and inculcates a new way of structured goal setting. Dora uses a personal tone to introduce his journey into the world of OKRs. He leaves Harvard to go to Silicon Valley, following his ex-lover. There, he is only able to get an interview with Intel. He is hired and attends a lecture by Andy Grove, who would become CEO of Intel. Andy's lecture was about how what Intel values is not someone's expertise or measured intelligence, but what they can accomplish. This inspired Dor. Grove also hammers home that you have to be able to measure your key result. If you cannot measure this, then it did not happen. Dor expands on OKRs with the history of business and the evolution of business principles to OKRs. Ford's principle was to squeeze as much out of workers for as cheap as possible, which worked in factories. But going forward, essentially what is needed is for workers to feel valued and to have input. The idea is that this will increase the overall input of the corporation. The first version of the OKR was the Measured Business Outcome, MBO. This isn't much different than the OKR. The big difference is how they were applied. OKRs focused on bottom-up and MBOs were top-down. Dora goes on to gush about Andy Grove. What is a little tough to read in this book is the lack of diversity in his examples. He doesn't mention one person of color or any women. Also, I understand his desired audience is most likely an entrepreneur who is starting out and needs help with a business plan. The lessons he is imparting are supposed to be for everyone, yet his examples are siloed. 3. Operation Crush an Intel Story How OKRs Won the Microprocessor Wars 
Bill Davidow links objectives to key results by coining the phrase "objectives as measured by key results." Motorola was heavy competition for Intel's microprocessor. Andy Grove made a plan called Operation Crush to eliminate this competition. It focused on marketing techniques. A big reason why Intel seems successful is because of the culture in the workplace. The people that worked there already believed in what they were doing, and leaders like Grove pushed that belief into a culture where work was your life. David Al alludes to this when he says Grove discouraged people from working on outside boards. When work becomes your life, you live and breathe it. You become aligned to the common goal as a personal goal. You are engaged. Many corporations might try OKRs, but without a culture being embedded and having that emotional investment, I can see how they would not succeed. Grove makes an excellent point when he says, "Bad companies do not survive a crisis; good companies do." I wouldn't say that OKRs are the saving grace of that. I would say the backbone. And what this chapter is really saying is that having a strong culture and a strong narrative behind your corporation is absolutely needed for survival. Four superpower number one: focus and commit to priorities. OKRs help us choose what matters most. Effective leaders lead by example. This is a simple yet often difficult concept for people in leadership positions. They can talk the talk, but if they do not walk the walk by continuously committing to the goals they have set out for an organization, the organization will falter. Dor suggests that when making goals, they are repeatedly assessed. This helps the goals remain clear to those who are involved and keeps objectives on track. How much an organization discusses these goals is up to the organization. Doris suggests quarterly. It is also important to keep an open mind. If OKRs need to be changed, then recognize it and do so. Once again, this comes back to having a culture where people feel comfortable saying what they think works and doesn't. It has to be a culture where everyone feels equally responsible for the overarching mission or goals of the corporation. Five focus the remind story. Brett Kopf used OKRs to overcome attention deficit disorder. Dora uses a case study to explain how OKRs helped accelerate a startup to success. The key thing to success is to understand what that means. Brett Kopf and his brother are the characters in this case study. Brett tells a story of how he struggled in school and was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder (ADD). He builds this narrative around a concept to have an app that teachers can use to contact their students. Using education as a narrative is a surefire way to build a cause. Kopf did his research to talk to key stakeholders, in this case teachers, to understand what would be the most effective way to do things. I wouldn't say that Brett overcame ADD with OKRs. I would say he structured his organization better with them. The key point here is that Brett already had a strong cause and pitch, and people were behind him. It was later in the game when OKRs came into place. This points out that even though OKRs are important, there are other things that need to be in place for a corporation to survive, and their story is the most important one. Six. Commit the Nuna story. Jenny Kim's personal commitment to transform healthcare. Kim's story is interesting because it goes to show that there isn't one way to go about building a company. She mentions that it was difficult to start so many people with OKRs when Nuna landed their first break. It took her really keeping on people to implement OKRs. This is interesting because it makes the reader wonder if OKRs were the issue, the people themselves, or the implementation process. In the end, OKRs were implemented and made a huge difference in the company. Seven superpower number two: align and connect for teamwork. Public, transparent OKRs spark and strengthen collaboration. Doris speaks to how important it is to have transparency with the organization's OKRs. Without proper alignment, the overall mission is much more likely to fail. 
Transparency means that everyone is able to see everyone else's OKRs from the bottom all the way to the top. Dor's theory is that it keeps people motivated, on track, and allows for help when it is needed. An example is then given to present how an OKR can effectively work. Dora gives an example with football. The goal is to make money for the owner. To do this, his objectives are to win the Super Bowl and fill 90% of the stands. He breaks this down by explaining the what and the how of his OKR. Whatever key results upper management is aiming for becomes the objectives of the organization's key players. It all trickles down. The important part is to make sure the results are measurable. And more important than that is to make sure that the key results have value. Without value and without a narrative behind the mission of OKRs, people will not be motivated. The next point is that OKRs cannot all trickle down. If they do, it can cause a loss of agility, flexibility, marginalized contributors, and one-dimensional linkages. The solution for this is transparency. In addition to transparency, Google implemented workers to have 20% of their time outside of their OKRs every day to work on side projects. This allows for innovation and creativity. Doer makes the point that changes that need to be made are made on the fringes of a corporation. People are more in touch with the needs of customers or what works for a goal to be achieved because they are the ones implementing it. He makes an interesting point that there is a fine line between giving people direction and allowing them to make their own direction. Too much management is never a good thing. It creates an environment where someone is taught to rely on their manager for everything rather than to be able to function independently. Not enough can create a disengaging environment. That is why having a transparent goal-setting system is helpful. If someone is not meeting their OKRs, you can inquire as to why. If they are, you know they are on point, and you can give them a high five. 8. Align, the MyFitnessPal story. Alignment via OKRs is more challenging and rewarding than Mike Lee anticipated. The story of MyFitnessPal starts with a vow made between a couple on their wedding day to get in better shape. It jumps to the creation of MyFitnessPal, which explodes in size fairly quick. Mike Lee, CEO of MyFitnessPal, talks about how difficult it was to create OKRs in the beginning that worked for everyone and integrated everyone. He discussed that until he started to have departmental meetings where each department would list their OKRs, MyFitnessPal suffered several times from people not being aligned with one another. Lee makes an interesting point as well, saying that he always pinned OKRs to an individual, not a team. This way the person could be held accountable, and there wouldn't be a blame game if the OKR was not achieved. The departmental meetings helped keep people in line. A good point to remember, which has been repeated throughout this book, is that scaling upward doesn't necessarily happen smoothly or create efficiency. This example is given several times in this case study. From humble beginnings to the acquisition by Under Armour, Lee talks about how scaling upward causes even more conscientiousness in establishing OKRs. He had to play by Under Armour's rules, but my fitness pal's OKRs helped establish why Under Armour's expectations were in line, or not, with what was feasible. Lee also drives home how key results helped to map out future objectives and how feasible they would be. 9. Connect, the Intuit story. Atticus Tyson uses OKR transparency to fortify a software pioneer's open culture. Atticus Tyson realized that he needed to list his OKRs to build a culture of transparency. People were questioning why his OKRs were not changing at the pace theirs were. It was a wake-up call for him to get on board with the process that he was implementing. He built a transparent culture, and it saw that his goals never changed. 10. Superpower number 3. Track for accountability. OKRs help us monitor progress and course correct. The great part about OKRs is that they can be tracked using software. 
Examples of software include Zendesk, Salesforce, and Jira. These software solutions are great for a number of reasons. One, they make goals more visible. Two, they drive engagement. Three, they promote internal networking. Four, they save time, money, and frustration. Dor uses an example at the beginning of the chapter of how a Fortune 500 company put all of their OKR system into Microsoft Word. It failed miserably because nobody could find anything in the document. Another way to ensure that the OKR system is rolled out is to designate shepherds for the process. These are people who ensure that the system is adapted by anybody who may want to opt out or procrastinate. Dora uses several examples from research that shows people are more effective if they feel like their goals are being achieved. This is why it is important to track progress. There are four options at any point of an OKR to track progress: one, continue; two, update; three, start; four. Stop. These are straightforward ways to track your OKR progress. The idea is not only to track what is working, but also to track what isn't working. This helps to scrap ideas that are no longer are serving the overall mission. A good way to score an OKR is to use a scale from zero to one. Zero point zero to zero point three is red. Zero point four to zero point six is yellow. 0.7 to 1.0 is green. This system tracks where an OKR falls short. Dora makes the point that a department needs to be realistic about setting the scores. If a department reaches 1.0 every quarter, then they are not setting the bar high enough. It is also important to think of these not as much as grades, but as ways to talk about what you should be working on and how that work is progressing. Here are the reflections worth having at the end of a quarter. One: Did I accomplish all of my objectives? If so, what contributed to my success? Two: If not, what obstacles did I encounter? Three: If I were to rewrite a goal achieved in full, what would I change? Four: What have I learned that might alter my approach to the next cycle's OKRs? Eleven: Track. The Gates Foundation story: A twenty billion dollar startup wields OKRs to fight devastating diseases. Bill and Melinda Gates started the Gates Foundation, and the mission is: everybody deserves a healthy and productive life. Patty Stonecipher had heard about OKRs and decided to implement them at the Gates Foundation. It was more important than they could have imagined because at a nonprofit, people can become confused by what a mission and an objective are. This was an observation Bill Gates had when the foundation began. They wanted to eradicate a disease, but by doing X, Y, Z that could fulfill that goal, were they causing other issues that were going against their overall mission? That is where OKRs come in. The goals of the Gates Foundation were large and meant to make a huge difference, which is why the OKR was important. Twelve superpower number four: stretch for amazing. OKRs empower us to achieve the seemingly impossible. Dora talks about stretch goals in this chapter, aka big, hairy, audacious goals (BHAD). These goals make the impossible seem possible, and they are measured by using OKRs. Stretch goals are necessary for innovation; otherwise, innovation simply will not happen. But everything needs to be aligned and tracked, along with a commitment from the team. There are two types of goals: committed objectives, such as sales and revenues goals, to be completed in time; aspirational objectives. Reflect bigger picture and higher risk. The example of Operation Crush is used again to set an example of how a stretch goal was implemented. In this case, it was a trip to Tahiti that drove things home. An important thing to think of when making stretch goals is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Most companies operate on a shoestring budget. Places like Google will have a different use of aspirational objectives than most average places. Evaluating risk looks different for every company. Thirteen. Stretch the Google Chrome story. 
CEO Sundar Pichai uses OKRs to build the world's leading web browser. Sundar grew up in India without even a rotary phone for some time. The lack of access to technology drove him to imagine a world where better technology existed. He worked at Google and helped develop Chrome. He spoke of how personal OKRs at Google were often around 70%, and you wouldn't want higher because it would stretch the team. You also avoided lower ones because you were held accountable. He had several stretch goals in obtaining users. He learned several lessons, including that sometimes you have to reframe a goal in order to achieve it. For example, they weren't reaching the desired amount of users, and they realized it was because people didn't understand the value of using Chrome. A commercial changed all of that. A passive alert reminding people to use Chrome upped their users as well. 14. Stretch, the YouTube story. CEO Susan Wojcicki and an audacious billion-hour goal. Susan Wojcicki starts off with her personal story of becoming involved with Google. She rented out her garage to Larry and Sergey, and the rest is history. It was her idea to merge YouTube with Google. Wojcicki became tasked with the OKR of having a billion users signed up by 2016. She had four years to do this, and it seemed impossible even in that time frame. She took into consideration the value of videos and content. A few takeaways were that this stretch goal, which was achieved, inspired other departments to follow suit with thinking big. She also mentions this OKR as being a religion. It took people believing in the goal that much to make it work. Part 2. The New World of Work 15. Continuous Performance Management OKRs and CFRs How Conversations, Feedback, and Recognition Help to Achieve Excellence OKRs are a foundation for setting goals, but what is more important to keep people engaged and on track is a personal relationship. Human resources departments have claimed that measure-based performance doesn't always do the trick. Dorr lists a tool called Continuous Performance Management. The instrument is referred to as CFR and is as follows. 1. Did I accomplish all of my objectives? If so, what contributed to my success? 2. If not, what obstacles did I encounter? 3. If I were to rewrite a goal achieved in full, what would I change? 4. What have I learned that might alter my approach to the next cycle's OKRs? These questions give insight to what keeps a company aligned. There needs to be more insight than what was achieved, such as, was this the right goal? Many Fortune 500 companies are changing the way they roll out feedback with continuous conversations rather than annual reviews. Other ideas are focusing on strengths rather than weaknesses, focusing on process rather than outcome, and not tying income to performance. These are key points to have when engaging in a conversation with an employee. What are you working on? How are you doing? How are your OKRs coming along? Is there anything impeding your work? What do you need from me to be more successful? How do you need to grow to achieve your career goals? Based on Better Works, there have been five areas that have been designated as crucial to having performance-related conversations between manager and employee. 1. Goal Setting and Reflection, where the employee's OKR plan is set for the coming cycle. The discussion focuses on how best to align individual objectives and key results with organizational priorities. 2. Ongoing Progress Updates, the brief and data-driven check-ins on the employee's real-time progress, with problem-solving as needed. 3. Two-Way Coaching, to help contributors reach their potential and managers do a better job. 4. Career Growth, to develop skills, identify growth opportunities, and expand employees' vision of their future at the company. 5. Lightweight Performance Reviews, a feedback mechanism to gather inputs and summarize what the employee has accomplished since the last meeting in the context of the organization's needs, 
As noted earlier, this conversation is held apart from an employee's annual compensation. While giving feedback, it is important to keep it specific. For example, if somebody did a good job, tell them specifically what it was that they did. It is also important to continuously do this and for small events. The same goes for negative feedback. It is important to keep it specific. There are other ways to provide feedback versus it just being between the manager and employee. Peer-to-peer -peer feedback can be a great way for people to gain recognition. This can be anonymous to avoid any sort of backfiring. Recognition is extremely important. Dora lists key points in providing it to employees. 1. Institute peer-to-peer -peer recognition. When employee achievements are consistently recognized by peers, a culture of gratitude is born. At Zoom Pizza, the Friday All Hands Roundup meeting concludes with a series of unsolicited, unedited shout-outs from anyone in the organization to anyone else who's done something remarkable. 2. Establish clear criteria. Recognize people for actions and results, completion of special projects, achievement of company goals, demonstrations of company goals, demonstrations of company values. 3. Replace Employee of the Month with Achievement of the Month. Share recognition stories. Newsletters or company blogs can supply the narrative behind the accomplishment, giving recognition more meaning. 4. Make recognition frequent and attainable. Hail smaller accomplishments too. That extra effort to meet a deadline, that special polish on a proposal, the little things a manager might take for granted. 5. Tie recognition to company goals and strategies. Customer service, innovation, teamwork, cost-cutting, any organizational priority can be supported by a timely shout-out. These methods will surely enhance performance. 16. Ditching Annual Performance Reviews – The Adobe Story Adobe affirms core values with conversations and feedback. Adobe executive Donna Morris had an idea to overturn the annual performance review. She noted that Adobe's core values were genuine, exceptional, innovative, and involved. The annual reviews were not meeting these core values. Donna pitched the idea that Adobe have periodic check-ins with employees. This would engage employees, keep them on track, and, as Donna said, Adobe employees would be living core values rather than dealing with them on a yearly basis. To roll out the check-in process, Donna had webinars produced. These webinars gave tips on giving and receiving feedback and what the process would look like overall. They were deployed to upper management and downward to get people on board. Adobe had an overall 90% participation rate with this process. Corrective feedback was given special attention. This was not easy for some of Adobe's population. Morris makes the point that if you can learn from this kind of feedback, it is a huge blessing. Check-ins gave people direction at Adobe and a chance for people to grow. 17. Baking Better Every Day – The Zoom Pizza Story a robotics pioneer leverages OKRs for teamwork and leadership, and to create the perfect pizza. Zoom is a robotically made pizza place trying to compete with big names like Pizza Hut and Domino's. Zoom chose to use robotics to cut down on the costs of labor. This money went into making better quality pizza and focusing on creativity. The corporation started out with two people, but quickly grew to ten. Managing two people was easy, but ten took more work. Founder Julia Collins talks about how they started using Liquid Planner project management software to track progress and assign tasks. The big fault with it was that it didn't tell people what was most important. For a new company, this was a problem. Julia and the other founder, Alex, decided in the beginning that they needed to make OKRs until survival wasn't an issue. Julia and Alex both talk about the discipline that comes with OKRs. As the founders, their job had as many goals as anybody else in the company. 
Alex points out that startups are resistant to goal setting as they are changing so fast. Often they want to figure it out. He says the value of OKRs in the beginning is that they teach leadership. When the company scales up, the processes are set in place to succeed. As mentioned in previous chapters, OKRs also give voices that wouldn't normally be heard a chance to be heard. OKRs put everything out in the open. OKRs put everything out in the open. This culture creates accountability and better teamwork. If someone says that their OKR is in risk of not being made, another team member will jump in to help them. Another key to building a culture is having personal relationships and somebody who understands you outside of your current role. Julia and Alex implemented monthly meetings with whoever your supervisor is. They are mandatory, but another rule is that the topic cannot be about work. It is about your personal goals. This can speak to why someone is performing or lagging behind. If you can touch on these issues and tie them into the current position as a stepping stone to larger dreams, it creates a completely different culture. Everyone needs to charge their batteries. This gives insight into where and when that needs to happen, so people can recharge and execute. Having a strong culture allows people to succeed and believe in what they do. OKRs are a guiding light in a startup when so many things are going on. 18. Culture. OKRs catalyze culture. CFRs nourish it. Without a strong culture, a company will be lost. OKRs are the priorities, but CFRs are what create culture in a workplace. Teachings from Andy Grove create five questions: one, structure and clarity. Our goals, roles, and execution plans on our team clear. Two, psychological safety. Can we take risks on this team without feeling insecure or embarrassed? Three, meaning of work. Are we working on something that is personally important for each of us? Four, dependability. Can we count on each other to do high quality work on time? Five, impact of work. Do we fundamentally believe that the work we're doing matters? A study by Teresia Ambile and Stephen Kramer found that the two most important elements in high motivation cultures were catalysts and nourishers. Catalysts are actions that support work, and nourishers are acts of interpersonal support. The companies that treat employees like valued partners rather than slaves have better output. This should be no surprise. The OKR culture is one of accountability. Nobody wants to be the one holding their team back. An example of Coursera's culture is given. Coursera's culture strongly believes in inspiring workers rather than doing the carrot and stick approach. The OKRs measured their progress. Dora uses an example from business philosopher Dov Seidman to describe just how important having an inclusive, transparent culture is. Dov compiled data which asked about a company's transparency. He found the more transparent, the more innovative the company was. Transparency is key to inspiring and keeping people invested in the company's mission. Nineteen. Culture change: The Lumeris story, overcoming OKR resistance with a culture makeover. Lumeris is a tech company that aims to organize, with its tools, healthcare into being more preventative than reactionary. They started to implement OKRs, but an HR executive found out that the system was all show. Progress wasn't being tracked. People were filling out the forms to fill out the forms. In order to change the company, big changes needed to be made. The top executives were not leaders in modeling OKRs, so they were asked to leave. The company underwent a huge change. The new leadership believed in OKRs, transparency, and a culture of accountability from bottom to top, and vice versa. Here are some of the questions that were the cultural agenda that helped change Lumeris. One. Why is transparency important? Why would you want people across other departments to know your goals? And why does what we're doing matter? Two. What is true accountability? 
What's the difference between accountability with respect for others' failings and accountability with vulnerability for our own? 3. How can OKRs help managers get work done through others? That's a big factor for scalability in a growing company. How do we engage other teams to adopt our objective as a priority and help assure that we reach it? 4. When is it time to stretch a team's workload or to ease off on the throttle? When do you shift an objective to a different team member or rewrite a goal to make it clearer or remove it completely? In building contributors' confidence, timing is everything. The culture shift happened when executives began to be part of the OKR system. And the biggest difference that was made was when an OKR wasn't being completed, rather than the team blaming an individual, they worked together to see how it could be accomplished. 20. Culture Change – Bono's One Campaign Story The world's greatest rock star deploys OKRs to save lives in Africa. Bono uses his example of starting U2 to compare starting the One Campaign. They weren't the best at what they did, but they had a culture, chemistry, and a mission. With that, they just had to move forward with goals. Fast forward to Bono's success. He decided he wanted to change the world. He started with addressing the AIDS emergency in Africa. A big turning point for Bono was realizing in the development of his OKRs that he needed to include the people that were being affected by them. Once he included voices from Africa, the OKRs changed into OKRs that were going to create meaningful change. This is an important lesson. What you think is the best for someone or something isn't necessarily the best. It was decided that corruption in Africa needed to be addressed before addressing AIDS. 20. Culture Change – Bono's One Campaign Story The world's greatest rock star deploys OKRs to save lives in Africa. Bono uses his example of starting U2 to compare starting the One campaign. They weren't the best at what they did, but they had a culture, chemistry, and a mission. With that, they just had to move forward with goals. Fast forward to Bono's success. He decided he wanted to change the world. He started with addressing the AIDS emergency in Africa. A big turning point for Bono was realizing in the development of his OKRs that he needed to include the people that were being affected by them. Once he included voices from Africa, the OKRs changed into OKRs that were going to create meaningful change. This is an important lesson. What you think is the best for someone or something isn't necessarily the best. It was decided that corruption in Africa needed to be addressed before addressing AIDS.